I think that when I just about had started my career, that time there were costume designers that created looks for individual actors from the point of view of their character and yet kind of creating a, a sort of a fashion statement for the masses and people to follow. But the beauty of that time was... But this was for, for the screen, for on screen. For on screen. Right. But at that point there was a beauty where they were specifically making it to that particular actor. I saw a lot more style coming out at that point. I saw a lot more uh, individuality coming out at that point. Today, maybe um, the fact that there is so much exposure and there is international fashion available on your fingertips, I feel like some people have not been able to channel their themselves more effectively than they would before. Because before, I think the, um, the outlets would feel far and few. So they had to really kind of think and feel and, and then kind of dress up, even if it was the way it was. I saw a lot more individuality then. Today, I feel like there is just this feeling of um, finding yourself through fashion, which is what happened to me. And there came a point that this line somewhere got blurred, where you know what was happening in the movies and what was happening in, in the fashion industry kind of blurred. And that is the point actually I went through a metamorphosis where I discovered what is my personality, what do I actually like to do because there's just too many various kind of influences. So I think for an actor today what's most important is to, um, and also maybe our job is to play different characters. So we have the ability to change and become something every time, which is something new. But what's even more difficult is to still retain your personal character, to still retain your sense of self. And I think this is a constant quest for an actor. Um, but I think what I have been able to do till today is do make the choices I made and not be apologetic about it. Because there are a, a time not terribly long ago, and I think it's probably true to some degree even now, where fashion purists say Bollywood isn't cool. Bollywood isn't fashion cool. Uh, it isn't real fashion. And I mean, there was a, there was a time, right, where when they didn't want um, a film star on the runway because it would just take away the focus from the clothes. It was all about the showstopper. The clothes must should do all the talking. Ops is very, it's very young with that question. <laughs> I, I will admit I did do some research with her last night. Um, what changed? Well, um, you're right. I think for a very long time, the supermodel was the supermodel and an actor was an actor. And they both stood their ground very firmly in their respective professions. And I think somehow, we just went into, and, and you know, I'll tell you something, Rajiv, we may like it or not, but I think in this country only two things really work, Bollywood and cricket, uh, and Shadis. So, you know, you and, and Shad, let me tell you, you can say that I'm following this trend and that trend, but if Shad is on, dude, you're, you're in for trouble, I can't tell you that, okay? So, you can have the best collection in the world, but if it's not the time for it, no one's buying it. Um, I think somehow, the supermodel got exhausted um, and then we had, I mean, I, I think I always say the last of the supermodels were what? Candice Pinto and Cara Gracias and that lot and I loved working with them. I loved having them in my clothes. Uh, but I didn't get to work with the the OGs, yeah. as they say. I, I, was, I didn't make my debut by then. Um, but I think somewhere we, they got exhausted of, the runway itself got very exhausting. You know, that same banquet, runway, same backdrop, only this LED is changing in the back and then you know your clothes are coming out one after the other. I think it just got exhausting for people. I always thought fashion shows were a parallel universe you take the audience into. And somehow we stopped doing that because just the frequency of shows, the, the number of shows got more and more and more. And then suddenly every design house and designer started to wonder, okay, how do I grab more eyeballs? And that's where Bollywood stepped in. And then suddenly now it's all it also. But I think that most of the time designers are mindless about their choices in Bollywood. It's a very who's available and what rate. That's right. You know? Yes. And who will fit my clothes and who's going to have more social media followers and I will take that person. I think it 
that person has to be an expression of what your brand stands for. And that is lost. So take us through the campaign that you just did with Karina, which is a smashing campaign. Um, why was she the right person? What was the thought behind that? And what did you do for your business? You know, she was the right person because nobody that I spoke to, and like Tamanna said, if you want to make the worst mistake, ask everyone. <laughs> So I asked around and everyone said, Karina is not, she, you know, you don't think of her as a bride. And I said, that's why Karina will be my bride, you know. And I am very into, I like working with actors who are also incredibly powerful human beings, you know. Who have something to say in their personal life as well. Because I think that actors' lives don't stop on cellulite. They always carry forward, you know, they become icons. You want to live like them, dress like them, eat like them. And I want to do all of that like Karina. You know, she makes me aspire to be, to wear different hats, different, you know, just take on different roles. And there's so much ease, she's so comfortable in her body. Um, there was not one question about, shoot me from this angle. This is my better side. I look better like nothing. It was just, I'm your muse for the day and you do with me what you want. And I think at that stage in her career, uh, where she is, she could have very well commanded a room and said, you shoot me, I call the shots. But I think for me it was important that I like the human more than I like the actor. And that the human resonates with the people who buy my clothes. You know, we're not a brand that uh, is overly commercial in that sense. We've always been a little bit niche. We do things like the off-center, like I say. And Karina is off-center, but yet she's the center of everyone's universe somehow. So, yeah. Now, when did fashion, when did Bollywood become fashion cool? I think it's always been. I just think that we haven't given the association between Bollywood and fashion enough credit. I don't know why they've been into parallel universes because they have such a symbiotic uh, relationship. I can't, uh, I, I, I don't think Bollywood can survive without beautiful clothes. And I don't think fashion should ignore Bollywood at all. Uh, simply because, you know, we can, I mean, movie stars can sell snow to an Eskimo. And, uh, I mean, can you imagine if Emporio Armani said, I don't want to dress, you know, Richard Gere for the Oscars or whatever, we'd have no red carpet at all, you know. And, uh, and I think now, you know, designers have come to a point where they will do anything and everything to sort of dress a movie star, any movie star, whoever's available, whoever they can afford. Um, but other than the red carpet and other than, uh, uh, you know, dressing up people for events and for Instagram, the relationship that costumes have with cinema is almost in that set, right? So I don't think that the two can be or should be thought of as independent of each other. They're very, very independent. So to all of you, I mean, who, I mean, does fashion influence films or the films influence films? What gives us the chicken or the egg? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think films influence everything. Yeah. In this country, it is, right? In this country, they do. And it's, it's probably a thing of the West where you, know, you have both sort of going hand in hand. Uh, but I think fashion somehow, and I'm talking about the current scenario and the current uh, the boom of OTT and everything. I think fashion is the only model of the only model of the society. You know, and you can really tell what a society is feeling going through what they're going through. And society, how they're feeling through the way, you know, you see fashion brands dress women and the way you see them style people. And we've become a lot braver. Fashion's become so brave in this country. It's no longer just about a certain look. It's much braver. Also, it's been given credit now, which it wasn't given earlier. I mean, I think the National Award for Costume Design is not a very old thing. It's probably just 10 or 15 years old. And uh, I think fashion was not taken seriously, and, uh, and costume was not taken seriously, but it's such a such an important part of the world. I think as time elapses, whichever medium is the most strongest is going to slowly and steadily change the way we consume fashion. Fashion was very much a part of Bollywood, only that we were creating it differently. And of course, 
the best of costume designers were exposed to fashion all over the world and they were bringing it to us and we didn't even know about it because we just didn't, we never had those books to read, we never had um, runway shows to watch. Uh, so how we were watching uh, their interpretation of fashion was through movies. And then the moment technology moved and we had exposure to everything that's going on in any part of the world, slowly that kind of became together and now it's just, uh, it's exploded I think. There's too much. It's really, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or not and I don't know how to take yourself away from it because I it's like you love watching it as well and you should also not watch it so you can create something on your own. So I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a good question, it's a good masala question. How do you, when you look at so many things that exist outside, how do you go back inside and create something new out of that? I mean, where do you get the inspiration from? Because as creative people, we need something, some food for thought, some food for creation. Some silence. <laughs> yeah, some, some silence. Some blackness. No, but you know, I think, uh, to be honest, we're not really inventing the next pair of jeans. I'll tell you that I'm very honest about that. Nor am I inventing the next white shirt, which everyone's going to wear. Uh, it is, there is a template, you know, when, when it comes to bridal, there's a template. When it comes to ready to wear, there's a template. When it comes to India, I mean, the A line kurta is the template, whether we like it or not, you know. And we can say fashion this and trend that and this forecast and that, but at the end of the day, the A-line kurta with the legging is the A-line kurta with the legging. It's, it's like good job for this country. We love it and, and Indians love it. And, and comfortable fabric, you know. Um, so I think it's, it's tough to, for me it's very hard because I'm so sort of, I'm very active on social media. And I sometimes find it so hard not to be constantly influenced by something. And I think that, oh, is this the way things are going? Then I may as well follow their lead. But then I do have a little fun. I, I have a little cocoon where I go away and I have, that's where I have my fun. And that's where I don't make any money off it and I have my fun. So, yeah. I'm going to take off on something that Navita said. I'm going to ask you, Tamana. Um, she said costume is such an important part of, of, of Hollywood, of film. And it's true, isn't it? I want to get your sense as an actor. Um, the, the designer and, and, and the I mean, how much of what you're wearing, what your, what your character's appearance is going to be, and I largely mean costume, um, becomes your in for understanding that person that you're going to be playing. Is costume a big part of helping you become that character? <laughs> Understanding what she's going to wear is that, become, is, that, is, that is that a great way to sort of figure out who this person is and how you want to play them? So nowadays, how I do it is I first try to figure out what I think the character is, and then I try to figure out how would this character dress. And then there are you know uh, there are these points where we talk as much as possible to the costume designer on board that project to actually create something that is what the character we think would be. And somewhere, even on, it has to feel natural to me as well. If I'm playing that part, I have to make it my own. And I have always firmly believed the moment you walk onto a set with that costume and whatever that get up is, I think if you get it right, I think 50% of the battle is won. Um, and then, of course, you can you enhance it with everything in your heart and soul and your blood that you put into it. But, um, but I think 50% of the battle is won if you get the look of it. So have you done films? Do you, do you design, do you have your work on? Listen, let's not talk about it. Look at it. No. Yeah, traffic for what? It's a bit traumatic. <laughs> uh, but but I, I, I tell you my biggest regret in life is, and I only have one regret because I don't regret anything. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, in, I, I couldn't do uh, Mr. Bhansali's Ram Leela. I was offered to do costume for that and I couldn't do it for various reasons. And it is the single greatest regret of my life. And at that time it was meant to be, I think, Karina and Ranveer in the, in, in the lead. And we, we got down to it. I mean, we started thinking of let's go to Kach and get the costumes and the fabric and this and that. But it was my greatest regret. And also very, I, mean, I, I think I'll never forget that phone call. But uh, no, I never did film after that. I just, I don't think that I'm cut out for the trilogy, to be honest. I see how costume designers 
uh, go through the process of a film. And I think you can either do that and have a very strong team do that, or you can run a brand, run a brand in a way. And I think I'm cut out to run a brand in a way. Kavita, can you talk about sort of costume in film in modern Hindi cinema and how that's evolved? I mean, you know, you pointed out and quite rightly so to me yesterday when we were chatting that the first Indian to ever win an Oscar was Bhanwadeya for, uh, and you, you attended her, her, ex her uh, exhibition of her archives recently. Can you talk about the evolution of sort of costume in Hindi cinema over the last maybe 25 years, if you like, or longer? Into its own, you know, uh, in a very strong, uh, uh, in a very strong credit, it's really part of what is. I mean, one unfortunately, I don't even know how many films she must have done, hundreds of films uh, uh, that she styled and for everybody. Um, but she was supported. She was pre-internet. You know, by the time the internet came about and by social media came about, by the time the fashion industry was so born in India, one was retired, you know. Uh, I think the last thing was Swadesh, yes. right? And uh, but now I see so many people who want to do, st who want to style for films, like Ria, Ria Kapoor, who I'm a big fan of, I mean, she's a great producer and a director and a fabulous stylist too. She's, uh, uh, she has a film coming out and all her films sort of are, uh, you know, are so playful with their costumes as well. And I cannot imagine giving a problem. I would have done it for you. I've totally taken your name. I, can't, I mean, I think it's one of the most beautifully styled films, uh, Gonzalez, Brown Lila. Um, I, you know, for me, also being a fashion sort of writer, it's such an important part of a movie experience to sort of enjoy what the, what the characters are wearing, enjoy how the film is styled. And I find myself enjoying a lot of cinema that may not be a great story in terms of you know, conflict or resolution or whatever. Uh, but if the movie stars look good, if the actors look good, I'm happy, you know. And uh, I, I don't think it's polite to sort of tell you which these films are. But you know, so many films today take their costumes so seriously as much as they do the cinematography or uh, the lighting or something like that. And I think that's really integral because uh, you know, I mean, I think uh, styling of film is now a prison. Costume is now a prison. It's a new way to sort of approach cinema as technically superior cinema. And um, I mean, I was talking to Vidhu Vinod Chopra uh, a couple of months ago just before his amazing 12th film release. And you know, we were of course talking about costume and how he's done it. And most of his characters are very, you know, uh, dressed as normal people are. And then there was a film that he made, one of his oldest films, I don't know if you remember it, Khamush. Uh, it's not available digitally, but I recently saw it uh, at a film club. And um, not only were the actors at the time wearing their own clothes, I mean, I would have been very happy, <laughs> but they also had their own names, like Sony Rasan, plays Sony Rasan, and Shivara Asmi, plays Shivara Asmi, and I think Amol Palikar is also himself. Of course, he's a murderer, which is unimaginable. But, uh, uh, but imagine from that to where we are today, you know, to the glamour that uh, costume sort of brings cinema, to the realism it sort of brings in. And I think actors today are not just, you know, actors, they're also public figures in, in, in the age of Instagram. Uh, and Vivika Padukone is worth 500 crores, and I don't think all of that is from, you know, her acting, a lot of it is you know, from her. Uh, and her campaigns. So I think you're looking good and dressing for the part every day, whether you're going to the gym or the airport, is such an integral part to the you know, start yeah. starting today. But is it exhausting, Kamala? Well, it's exhausting if you don't enjoy it. So the idea is to start doing things that you enjoy. The moment you start enjoying, like for me, there was a phase where I wanted to dress to the airport. But then there are days I don't want to dress to the airport. The day, there are days I want to wear just a kurta and go and I do that. Because I feel like your mood is actually a great way to even get inspired. Because I feel like sometimes when you don't have anything in mind, sometimes you come up with something really creative. And I have many a times discovered things when I've been in a lot of constraint. And I feel like creativity comes out of constraint. 
um, where you don't have the things you need. Uh, so I actually use that as a food for whenever I want to dress up. Masawa, you're an actor as well now, and, and a pretty good one. And, and work, work in the show, Masawa. I would work actor as well. <laughs> uh, what is that like? I mean, um, do you do you call the shots and on what you wear when you're when you're on screen? Listen, that was really hard not to do. Okay, um, because I just feel like I, it was more to love. You know, Masawa, Masawa season one. I remember. I just uh, I was like. Should I be saying that that cushion shouldn't be that color? Is that my department? No, it's art. And then someone speaks art, you know? And then something else happens. And I'm like, wow, there's so many people just to move a cushion or whatever, you know? Um, on the fashion piece, I did not get involved. And I did, that's the only advice that I asked my mother for. I said, you know, is, is this my business? She said, no, not at all. <laughs> Stay out of it. Let people do their job, you do your job. On this set, you're an actor. So I did that, and I had a great time. Uh, but I remember in season two, I wanted to upgrade, you know, uh, everything that we did, everything from the lighting to the, the set, the costume, everything was just a step up, because I don't think that uh, season one was 100%, and I'm very openly calling that out. Uh, but I remember in season two, I said, let's just get, you know, get an upgrade. And we did that, and we had a lot more fun with costumes. So a lot of the, even the other cast was much better dressed, and I think we learned uh, because this was a new format. On modern love, I think that's the first time, and, and I agree with what Kamana said, where fifty percent of the job of an actor is done when you are dressed to the T, you know, for that part. And I remember in modern love, I had uh, I was playing this girl from Thane, I would believe it. And uh, I was supposed to have like one pair of sneakers and like loose jeans and this boy shirt on top. And my hair was in a ponytail. And, and I was wearing this liner, you know, that really, I call it the mummy liner, you know, it's just like, it's, it's thick and it's, it doesn't do anything for anyone's eyes. You know, I'm into the winged liner situation. And I remember telling the director, I said, I just, this is not me. He said, yeah, exactly, this is not you. You're not playing yourself, you're playing a character. And that's when I understood the power of how when you dress a certain way, you dress like a character. Um, it does so much of the job that dialogue even cannot do, you know. Your body language changes, the way you, you know, the chemistry with your co-star changes, everything changes. And I remember I said, can I just have a little bit of a flick? <laughs> can I just have a little a bit more contouring? He said, no, you can't. You're just a regular girl. You can't do all of this. So I really believe in the power of costume to do a lot of the storytelling and introduction for a character before the character can even speak of it. And it's very powerful. Amanda, what happens when you're in, I don't want to use the word conflict, that's a strong word, but in disagreement, the way that you see this character might be a little bit different from the way that your director does or your costume designer does, and the, and the, the, the disagreement is over the the visual the visual element of, of how this character is going to look. What tends to happen? You also bring years of experience as an actor. Um, is your voice heard as an actor? I think today, yes. Um, what I like to do, and I love doing this with my team, and as you know, Rajiv, films will always be teamwork. Whether we like it or not, it's not one person's perspective that's being put out there. It's one person's vision, yes, but there are lots of different perspectives, energies that come together to create someone's vision. So um, I think today's filmmakers are a lot more um, you know, aware that an actor is actually going to make that character his own. Um, so I do, I do have times where there's a disagreement, and whenever there's a disagreement, what I actually do is, like for example, the skin tone that I have. Um, recently, I was supposed to do a look test for something, and they wanted me to try a warmer skin tone. Uh, which I was very happy to explore because I've done it in films like Bahubali, I've done it in uh, films, a, a Tamil film called Devi. So I've done it a bunch of times. And because I do believe one must fully transform when a character demands it. Um, and, uh, but even in just in the span 
sign up for the company for seven, eight years ago. You know, the digital, um, um, the way the digital film camera is capturing us today, it can literally see the pores of our skin. So if I am wearing something that's like a layer on my skin, it's going to look synthetic. It's going to look like makeup, and that's a layer between the audience and me. And that is how I felt about it. But I truly feel because this is a teamwork, we need to make sure that everybody feels the same as we feel. So I went through the process of applying that. Then it was my my director himself was like, I don't think this works. So I feel like in films we either convince the other person or we get convinced. And when you know you're saying something that's true and strong, you stand by it and uh, you fight for it. And um, and yeah, and, hope it. and at the end, the film should work. After all this drama that we have put through, the last thing that we're hoping is this movie and this character is liked by people. So that's the main goal, actually. Uh, Masabu, when, when you're dressing um, an actor, it, it could be for a for public appearance to be for, for a campaign. Again, are there, I mean, are, are you trying to find what what in your sort of atelier is, suits their personality? Are you trying to get them to be a little brave? What is the push and pull um, when you're working with actors? Well, um, I think because they're stylists for pretty much every actor today, um, I think it first starts with their vision of uh, you know, the actor that they're styling. And then you sort of go down into, you know, okay, what event are they going to? And are they going to be comfortable in this for many hours? Or is this something that's just going to be a quick photo op and out, you know? Uh, I think it really depends on that. Um, what I do find is that sometimes uh, there is a gap between what the stylist and the actor want, you know? And uh, I always go the extra mile in the way that I say, I think you should give this a shot, you know, because an actor could be looking a certain way. Um, or sometimes when I'm designing a piece, just recently I was designing something and I just said, this has Alia written all over it. And I just thought of that. And I don't, and I don't really dress Alia that much. So I think what happens is that you always find pieces that suit a certain personality, but there is that, first there's the stylist assistant, and then there's the stylist, and you know, there's a brief. So I think that's how it typically works. Um, having said that, I think an actor does have a mind of their own. Uh, like even with Tamanna, you know, every time I've had a conversation with her, she's always very clear about the color, for example, like she's very clear about what color washes her out, and what makes her skin really you know, come out in that sense. So I think they always know. Sona is something like that as well, who really just knows exactly what she'd like to wear. Um, but there are some people who are very, very happy to just go with what the stylist will say. Um, but yeah, there are pieces that I see and I just think that oh, this, this has this actor written all over it. And I actually sometimes just keep it away and I don't give it to anyone else because I think it will do that person justice. Um, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, that's fine. But I think that Yes, uh, actors, every actor in our country does have a very strong personality, straight from the top all the way down. And um, I think that they all know their bodies so well. Right? But, you know, even someone like Karina really understands her body and uh, its, its strengths, its weaknesses, everything, and she's very happy to be clear about that. Yeah. Now, with that, let's talk about the red carpet, which has become a multi million dollar industry in itself, hasn't it? Um, from, from the time that we were sort of cup journalists. Um, tell, us, tell us what the, the, the sort of the, the pressure and the importance of red carpet today, and then we'll ask them, um, you know, the pressure that's on them to light up the red carpet. I mean, I'm sure it was from the stars, right? I mean, a uh, in which I was dressed up in, um, in a gown, where it was so tight that my stomach started to hurt and I had to leave the event and I had to go. Um, so, as actors, I think we're always trying to put the best version of ourselves. Because somewhere, we realize that just like when I was a young girl, I got inspired by a film actor. There'll be somebody out there watching me and getting inspired. But that particular night, when I wore that outfit and I literally had a stomach ache and I had to leave the event because of 
mentally be upset because of how tight and I could not breathe. I decided that very night that never again will I do this. And never again will I would, would want to put another girl through that feeling that she needs to wear a dress that tight that she can't wear. <coughs> but I think that's the journey. We all need to make that journey where in the pursuit of being putting our best foot forward, um, instead of crumbling under that pressure, we have to realize from that pressure that what is it that actually matters uh, and what actually makes you feel good and comfortable and what is the standard that you want to set for people because the standard of beauty is just sometimes it's bizarre and it's not, uh, I mean realistic to play, play but uh, not even about realism, I'm saying it has to be human, yeah. you know, let's just get that part. Um, so I think that's what I'm aiming for today and I'm definitely in a place where I feel like a red carpet is an opportunity for me to have fun yeah. and um, and dress up and yes it is literally, um, it is pretty much you know, giving an organ away. That sort of expense is needed for a certain day. Um, but uh, I guess I look at it like a business because I feel like as actors, like how she said, Today we are, if you are in the fashion industry or if you are in any way associated with it, um, it's a part of an investment into your job itself. I remember when I was a young girl, I didn't have the money, Rajiv. I was very, very young. I would have to take it from my parents. But I would, people, there would be no budget for costumes, for film. I've taken my own costumes and I've gone and shot songs. So today as an actor, Yes, it's hard. And it's not. It's not possible for everybody to do it. But if you are in the position to do it, I think a smart business person or a smart potential entrepreneur will always think about, you know, how can I put into my own work because I am my own work. So, so you know, honestly, Rajiv, I think do what you can with you know with what your means are i really believe that and i think do it more from the point of like i think it's going to be hell for everyone's mental health to begin with to see or to match up to the standard of looking a certain way and having a certain body and having certain hair makeup and jewels all the time i think it's i i worry i worry about the next generation because i think that they have this they're all they're only thinking of how do i you know, have the money to get to this. It's scary. You know, how do I live up to this image that I have created for myself on social media? Do it like a job. Detach yourself from it. And don't be, don't, don't get emotional about it. Other dimaag khara ho gaya. And aapka dimaag khara ho gaya, so the red carpet, kya, kya fayda hai? What's the point? Why would you want to do anything that you don't have fun doing, why don't you, you know, you enjoy it? And I'll tell you, I was this close to my mind going, I'm just going bonkers. I mean, literally my mother has pulled me out of it because she said, do you really need hair makeup? Like you didn't brush your hair as a kid, you don't know how to brush your damn hair or like put on lipstick. You know, so I think it's, when I can do it, I do it. When I don't, and certain days I don't have the energy, Rajiv, to finish a whole day's work. I, I have about 370 people in my company to deal with all of that and then come back and sit in a hair makeup chair and get into costume and then kill my, and get acidity because of a tight dress. I can't do it and I don't do it. Some days when I can, like today I really wanted to wear a sari and I pulled out my best sari, you know, from way back and I said I'll dress up and I'll come for this. But Days where I don't feel like it, I don't do it. I never push myself beyond a point where I know it's going to ruin my mental health. That's the most important thing for me. It's okay. I won't be the coolest thing for one week. It's fine. It's good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it out to, to for questions in a minute, but I just wanna I thought we'll lighten up a little bit. What's your most embarrassing fashion faux pas that you've committed to each of you? Uh, wearing uh, white lingerie under a black dress and then being packed with flash. <laughs> Were you sport about it when, when, when they dug into it? Um, yeah, I think I was. But this was pre-social like social media 
I don't know how I would feel about it now. Maybe I wouldn't do it, obviously. Uh, well, I hope I learned, but uh, yeah, I think I was quite a sport about it. Okay. Uh, I mean, so many to mention, I <laughs> think. Uh, but I'm always uh, the most underdressed person in the room, not to be. But otherwise. That, I would take that honor today. <laughs> <laughs> today, that honor belongs to you, Basin. You should have worn a jacket. Um, but yeah, I think I need to dress up a little more and I would be uh, <coughs> much happier if I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Too many Ranji, too many. And it's all documented. I started work at 15. So people have seen me grow up from 15 and 34 today. There's enough evidence of how terribly I failed uh, on the internet. All you need to do is Google me. Um, yeah, but I'm really, uh, I'm really proud of it now. I just feel like I've come such a long way. And uh, and sometimes when I'm having a low day, I'm actually looking at those images. I'm like, it's not so bad. I'm like, it's okay. You know, it's an interesting point. I want to ask all three of you. The thing about films and fashion and any form of art is that, you know, does it hold up when you look back? And I, I know this because we look at films and I look at Dilshata and I say, you know, it holds up. Um, 20 years later, it still holds up. I, I, you know, what, what is what is the important? <coughs> are you thinking about that when you're when you're creating fashion, when you're when you're creating a look? Is it going to hold up? Because you know, I look at old films and, and I didn't think of Dilchat. The fashion sometimes isn't holding up in that fashion, in, that, in that film. There's this one song, Koi Kahe. It's a it's a disco song. And I'm like, I can't believe they wore that stuff. Uh, so what is? Uh, I don't know, I mean like a lot of stuff actually look, look, go back to the you know to the, the 80s film, the 80s will just it would have blurred, we'll just forget the 80s, then everyone was back in the 80s. You know, a lot of 90s stuff also you look at people like not like they wore that, that was okay. Um, are you conscious of that and you, or is that just way too much pressure to take on that? What are they gonna be thinking 20 years later? I mean I, I mean, you know, I think it's cyclic the whole 80s and 90s pretty much came back a couple of years ago with the oversized Yes. Jackets, now the big hair, thanks to Miley Cyrus's back, and it's so like I woke up like that too. Um, but I don't think where fashion independently is concerned, it's meant to be sort of it, uh, it's 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 meant to be cyclical, like it's meant to have new things and all of that. And of course, we do have the idea of elements and things that are classics yeah. and that you know stay forever, like uh, like the black dress or you know Audrey Hepburn and Edith Head. Um, we can't talk about cinema and costume without talking about Edith Head. She is the um, she, she, she's the woman to have won the most Oscars ever. I think she's eight or nine or ten, and, and nobody sort of matches that. And of course, she's a costume designer. Um, yeah, but like the black dress, for example, and she dressed Audrey Hepburn for Roman Holiday and Honey Plays, Breakfast at Tiffany's, all of that. Um, so some classics sort of remain and never go out of style, and that's that's really beautiful too. But I think it's you know cyclic in fashion where you can have fun with things where sometimes it's trendy and sometimes it's just fussy. It's lots of fun. You know, I did a song last year called Kavala, which people loved on. Uh, it was a range. People loved it. Yeah, the curly yeah. hair. The curly hair. So there were two kind of uh, women who came up to me. Uh, one was someone middle-aged and she was like, you know, I'm really thankful to you that I'm feeling that, you know, it's good to be curvy and it's good to, you know, be a bit chubby. And I did not till that moment realize that I, according to her, I was chubby in the song. <laughs> I thought I was just fine. But, uh, but well, uh, it was nice to see that Indian women are curvy. Yeah. And if there's one thing that I would really like to encourage through the way I dress today is to embrace my curves and to make women feel great about it because people want it and if you have it, I think you should just flaunt it, enjoy it. And then I had a very young girl who had made a deal on the same song and she was like, you know, I went and I bought the same animal print fabric and I bought the same color and I made that and I got it made from my tailor and I did this reel and she was showing me the reel. So I was like, you know what, that's what's happening right now with what as actors we are doing. Someone that young is getting influenced in terms of ideas. You know, she curled her hair, she did exactly what I did. And so that's the influence we have right now. So I think the idea is to enjoy yourself and um, and yeah, and just see the magic happen because 
Somewhere or the other, if you do something heartfelt, it touches people. I think when I'm creating, Rajiv, I definitely think about, uh, well, I think things have changed actually for me, I have to say. When I started off, it was more about, is the song trend or is it something that's going to be cool for now and be good. Me and, me and Masala went for breakfast one particular morning. And uh, I cannot tell you, we couldn't eat breakfast because only people kept coming to the table to talk to Masala and tell her how much they love the collections. And uh, it was because you were in a cap and you were just like facing who I love this. I was so happy to just see. And then some people who were not from the country. I remember one gentleman who was not from India and he was wearing her shirt. And he just like came up and he was like, listen, look, I'm wearing your shirt. And it was so, it was a battle of great pride that today Indian designers, Indian work, is everywhere. It's really being spoken about. It's being celebrated. It's being looked up to. So I think it's a great time for Indian people to be so proud of what they do, be it in fashion or anything else. Before I before I go to the only other thing I feel we should talk about is men and fashion, right? I mean that's you tell us <laughs> that wrong person. I not a printed kitsch jacket. I wish I had the courage. <laughs> It feels like men are really up to game as well. Our friend Vijay Verma is, uh, is the red carpet doll and just look at him. Um, do you feel like the games with the, the men are raising the bar as well? I think they've always sort of been the biggest fighters. I mean, naturally, since they've been the bigger earners. But the men's apparel market, Masaba will agree, has been like phenomenally huge. But in terms of design, it's, in India, it's always been led by, by the women designers, by driving men. But now, I've I see men have so much fun. I mean, I'm a big fan of how Vijay Verma dresses. I'm not looking at them now. I'm a big fan of how Rinvi dresses. And every actor today is sort of having fun on the red carpet with his Instagram. I mean, it's not just enough to have an amazing body and those fab abs. You know, you also have to occupy fashion day. And I love that. And I see that translating into regular people. You know, a lot of grooms are not just showing up in like fab India kurtas or you know, whatever. Um, but you know, effort is amazing, right? It's nice to sort of take effort to sort of dress up, whether you're going to work or you're getting married or you're, you're a famous person. It's just nice to have, you know, work with, you know. And I and and I love the fact that men are having so much fun with it. You know, the one I have to ask, right? Who takes longer to dress up? What do you think? Did you know me a little bit? Of course, I did. <laughs> We'll open it out. If anyone has questions, you'll raise your hand and we'll send a mic to the gentleman there. I think we can take maybe three questions. Can we send a mic to the gentleman there or I can stand up and... Um, just go for it. Okay. Uh, so, I am uh, from Sri Lanka, from Colombo. Um, so, I'm currently heading the Colombo Fashion Council and... Uh, the session is really good and it was very enlightening about fashion and film and we are a big fan of both of you and Masaba Masaba I think was number one TV show um, in Sri Lanka in Netflix so we are big fan following there so my question is about fashion conscious and sustainability now as an actor Tamanna do you think twice before you pick a garment from a designer to understand or do you do a little bit of a background check to know how this garment is produced or the animals are slaughtered or is it coming from a sweatshop? How much conscious are you about that? And also, Masaba, how conscious are you about your production uh, when it comes to sustainability and ethical fashion? Thank you. So, um, for me, I think now I've made it a point that I have the most easiest wardrobe to manage. Uh, I've kept my personal clothing to the bare minimum because I realize I like to wear only four pants. And I keep wearing that like everybody else. And, uh, um, but for my work, yes, I keep needing different kind of clothes. And as and when I procure what I need, but in today's times, I've actually been interacting with a few designers closely, uh, from Masaba to Rahul Mishra to Gaurav Gupta, uh, Nita Lula, 
And I feel like they are people who are who have been so instrumental in you know, putting out India on you know on the world map. Um, and I make sure, like when I was talking to Rahul, this previous collection itself was inspired by uh, nature. So uh, and the superheroes were insects, for example, which I thought was a beautiful thought and idea. And just to know his idea of sustainability, so I'm actually educating myself. Uh, while I'm also uh, making choices where I take in only what I need and not excessively splurge on things that I don't think I can reuse because I feel like uh, they can never be enough. So it's best to minimize what you can actually use and uh, and be conscious of that. Yeah. I think uh, for me, you know, you're running the fashion label. Um, to be very honest, it's very difficult to be 100% sustainable. If you see some of the largest brands in the world, including H&M, uh, have pledged to be sustainable many, many years down the line. I'm talking about maybe a decade later. Um, it's because one, it requires money, and two, it is something that is, you know, the thing is, not being sustainable has actually penetrated so deep into fashion into society that we have to undo a lot of that. And that takes a lot longer than actually saying, I'd like to be a sustainable label. Uh, at a very basic level as a brand, we make small changes every day to how we look at sustainability. And fashion is one of the biggest polluters of the world. We all know that. There's no denying that. Um, having said that, when we have all the waste fabric that's left over after a garment is made, we call it katharam, it's just pieces of fabric that you can't really do anything with. We started to make little scrunchies and hairbands, so we make little scarves. We started to make masks during COVID uh, out of that fabric. We started to also make sure there was a system of that waste to be picked up and recycled and made into something else. That was one. Um, a couple of years back, I had the opportunity to tie up with the United Nations Environment Program, where we actually uh, worked with them closely to understand single-use plastic, which is actually the single biggest polluter uh, worldwide. And it's nothing. It's the plastic bag you use to go to the vegetable market to buy its sabzi and fruit and whatever. And it's, you know, the little things that you use every day, you just quickly discard it. So today, for example, even as a human being, when I'm going to a nature's basket to you know, stock up the house, I'm not taking a plastic bag. I'm consciously saying I will take the same muslin tote that I've been using over and over again. Having said that, coming back to the UNEP uh, collection that we did, we made a collection of garments that, so for example, the sleeve could be zipped off and it would fold up and it would become a carry bag. You know, so we had about, I think, a 20, 25 piece collection that we did with them in collaboration to educate people about how single use plastic is the biggest polluter. There are many different types of fabrics which are actually not as big polluters of the world as that. Um, another thing I tell you is in the beauty industry, there's a lot of noise about the cartons that do. Uh, that are shipped when you're buying a single lipstick. For example, you buy a lipstick that big and the carton is that big. Or you buy a nail paint that, that, that's that much and you have a carton that's that much. You know, people can say things over and over again about how it shouldn't be that big a box and should be smaller, etc., etc. The fact of the matter is, if you don't have that big a box and you don't fill it up with bubble wrap and all these things to pad it, your product will come to you damaged. And we haven't reached there. My beauty products are, um, you know, recyclable. The packaging. So I think in small ways we make amends. But to be a hundred percent sustainable, it's a long journey, and it's one that we've all embarked on. But I, I see that it's not something that can happen in the near future. And I don't want to just say it because it's a cool marketing gimmick. But uh, it's a long journey, and we, we've taken it on. And as and when we have the capital, as and when we have the means, and we have. Uh, the acceptance from consumers, you will take it head on. Oh, sorry, can I say yes. I think that in India, no, we were sustainable. If you look at the first time we had in our childhood, I remember growing up, I used to wear my aunt's and uncle's uh, clothes. I used to love those big t-shirts. So I used to take like my, uh, you know, my family's clothes. I've grown up with that. 
And I think I do that today. Today I give my clothes, some of my designer wear to you know your family. And this is how a calm is sustainable goes up. It is like Masaba said on a business level, it's a different <coughs> world being all together. There are so many aspects that are not something one can immediately do. But a calm army sustainable both asani se ho sakta hai, agar wo chahe to. So I think jo hum pehle kiya karte the bachpan mein, wohi agar aaj bhi karna shuru kare, to it's very simple actually, utna mushkil nahi hai. So if I can tell you, I don't think sustainability only means waste management. It, it, I mean, Indian fashion by its very nature is so dependent on craft, which is so dependent on artisans, whether they're embroiderers or, or weavers or dyers or printers. So Indian fashion, you know, authentic Indian fashion is very, very sustainable in that it so many people slightly more depend on it. You know, more rural, rural industry sort of thrives on, uh, on Indian fashion, but I think it's one of the most sustainable places to be. Uh, as for uh, uh, natural fabrics, I think it's the way to go and, and cruelty free in India actually means something else because I'm a big advocate of leather. It is the most sustainable uh, uh, fabric that there is. It's one of the most sustainable <laughs> materials. It lasts for decades and anything you have that's you know, natural leather or full leather or anything will pretty much fall apart in six months and maybe cost too as much and you will just be recycling or throwing that away. Uh, but if you see good quality leather shoes, they could you know, put that in for a couple of generations. So. Right, yes. Um, my question is for you, Masaba. What's your take on FEF, India Fashion Week? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. um, well, it's such a great initiative. I think it's your fourth year. Yes. Am I right? Okay. Uh, it's your fourth year and I think just for the limited amount of time that uh, you guys have been doing this and I think the panel discussion is, is always nice to add as a layer to the awards which are happening tomorrow. Uh, but I think it's always nice to have meaningful conversation with, uh, you know, esteemed panelists and Rajiv himself as well and talk about things that matter, talk about the future more importantly. And I think for not just for me, but I think for everybody here, it's been a big learning today to come here and uh, you know just think about all the choices that we're making as creators or as consumers uh, or just as you know as, as an audience. So I think it's lovely, and uh, thank you for having me. Can we please have a round of applause for our panelists and our moderator? I would also now like to call the stage Mr. Sanjay Nigam, founder of Fashion Entrepreneur Fund. Please come on the stage and present a small token of appreciation to our panelists and our moderator. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause to Mr. Rajiv Masar. Ma'am, 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 please close. Yeah. Sir, look here. Yeah. One minute. Ma'am, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, ma'am, look here. Center, center. Sir, sir, sir. Who's your name? Okay. Ma'am, look here. Camera, look. Sir. Can we please have a round of applause? One minute, one minute. Thank you, sir. This will be asking and educating any group for all of us here today. Sir, look here. A round of applause for Mr. Mustafa Gupta, also very much in our show. Sir, yeah. Sir, look here, look here, look here. Ma'am. Okay. And lastly, for Namrata Sharma Dadaria, who is a fashion critic. Sir, 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 look here, look here. Sir, 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 look here. Please group photo. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, 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 look here. Sir, little close. Yeah, look here, look here, look here. Yeah. Done. Uh, can you... Thank you so much for being here. The mandir is solo. Ma'am, can you... 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 I'm the dad. I'm the dad.
तो मैम आप दोनों ती, तीनों का तीनों का मैम थोड़ा आगे आइए ना मैम हाँ बस 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 ओके यस रेडी आप लुक है मैम यो मैंने सिंगल सिंगल सोलो सोलो या सिंगल यस मैम या मैम या मैम तो वो ना मैम थैंक यू मैडम यस मैम Thank you. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, आपका ही रहेगा मैम या या रेडी मैम यहाँ देखिए सेंटर या वेट वेट थैंक यू Thank you.